two before the one. Wisdom is water, I'm the daughter of the cannon fodder. Applied knowledge and insight, a born scholar. Look like a martyr to marauders like Tartar. Wise out slaughter, whack MCs, order a plotter. Original woman, decipher the womb. Crown of creation, fruit of the planet, earth and the moon. Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to another episode of Wise the Dome. Um, today, man, I have a very, very, very special guest. Uh, I have a, a collective that, that uh, you know, music collective, uh, art, um, you know, community activism, uh, knowledge itself, history, consciousness, all of the above. Um, MCE, I appreciate y'all for coming through. And if you mind, don't mind, introduce yourselves uh, individually so that people can get to know who you are. Peace, what up, man? I'm uh, Obafemi. I'm the M and MCE. I used to go by the name Magnum. You know, Palm Love, Arkansas. We in here, ARBGs. That's what it is, man. Hey, peace. I'm the C in the in the MCE that said Adams. Live and direct from the Shy Slash Palm Love, Arkansas. Yo, peace. It's E. Yo, what's up? I don't know if you can hear me, but. Uh, we can hear you. I'm E. Yeah, this E. Eshmalek. But E. I'm a uh, singer of the group. Uh, looking forward to uh, bringing it to the people. Yeah. And uh, let me see what's up with this, this this new type of thing that's going on right now. No doubt. No doubt, man. First off, I'd like to definitely uh, appreciate y'all for the, uh, and salute y'all for the work y'all do and for the music y'all make and, and for, uh, you know, giving me the time to come through the show. Um, first, I kind of want to get into like, and I ask everybody this, um, you know, like what kind of, what started your journey into, you know, consciousness and knowledge itself and self-realization and things of that nature? Like, if you can just kind of take us through, you know, how y'all became to be who you are now. Who want to go first? No matter. Uh, go ahead, bro. Yeah, you say you can go. Okay. Yeah. Um, with me, I, it's always been there. But uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, it's always been there. But sometimes you veer off and do other stuff, man. And then then something hits you and you realize, like, yo, I got a platform. I can I can use my voice to do this on. So, you know, when I started recording because I've been writing and rapping for a long time. But when I started recording, I started seeing, you know, different trends and other stuff. And it just made me re-question re myself on a question I asked a long time ago. Like, you know, why, you know, why are my people in the state that we in? Mm. So I just started taking my music and, and just using it as that tool to ask those questions, to find other people to get them answers. And that's where I'm at now with it. No doubt. Oh, but Femi, what about you? Yeah, um, man, you know, I, I would say, man, kind of the same sentiments as my brother, man. Like, I, I grew up in a household that was, I would say, aware to a certain degree. Like, you know, mother being a school teacher, like, I, you know, I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So Pine Bluff is like the mecca for black people in the state yeah. of Arkansas. So, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, surra I'm surrounded by, you know, blackness. Like my pops had his own business since uh, since the 80s. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, he made sure that, you know, he when it was time to get something to eat, we went to Granny's Kitchen instead of going to McDonald's. Like, when his car needed to be fixed, we were going to a black mechanic. When he needs stuff sold, we were going to a black seamstress. Like, I kind of grew up in that, you know, right. learning about my pops introduced me to the Nation of Islam information. Like, I learned about the Civil Rights Movement, all that kind of stuff early on, man. So, um, having, you know, kind of growing up with a level of awareness, as an adult, I would say, Man, um, going to the military uh, helped to open my eyes. Uh, you know, I, I read I read the autobiography of Malcolm X when I was eighteen. Mm. Uh, you know, in trouble in the military, on restriction, mm -hmm. couldn't go nowhere and <laughs> stuff. Man, so 
I some told me to go to the military library and you know I found the book. Mm-hmm. And uh that you know that book really helped to shift my consciousness. But mm-hmm. um, you know, fast forward coming back home, hearing the music and stuff on the radio, man, some you know, 2000, 2001, I knew something was off. I'm like, something ain't right. Man, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it kind of allowed me to reflect on some of the music I grew up hearing, the, right. the Boogie right. Down productions, you know what I'm saying? Uh, X-Clan, Poor Righteous Teachers, Public Enemy, like Ice Cube, the Get Up. Like, it was a lot of artists that was putting uh, consciousness in the music. And uh, I felt that the, the, the music on the radio just lacked a lot of balance, like, so, um, you know, as, as I'm learning on my journey, man, I just start to incorporate that more and more into my own music, man. So uh, that, that's kind of that's kind of how I got on, uh, on this journey, man. No doubt. No doubt. What about you, E? Well, uh, I would say uh, what, else, what started me on my journey, it would be... Uh, uh, Having grown up as a Christian and uh, being, you know, uh, in a family where you know we went to church three, four days out of the week, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Um, I remember, uh, you know, after all of this indoctrination, you know, uh, I remember when, uh, you know getting in trouble and stuff like that, praying to God and God did not answer my prayer mm. uh, in spite of all the things I've been taught mm. uh, that, you know, I was sincere at that moment. I was sincere, but God didn't, uh, I did not know that it was other things that one needs to know to, you know, to get that type of blessing uh, or to, to get that type of grace, right. so to speak. So, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, that that's what, once, you know, I got, you know, mixed up with the justice system and and I had to learn mm-hmm. or else I was going to go back, you know, mm-hmm. I had to learn. So, and I, you know, you learn, you know, you know, learn, you know better, you do better. So, Indeed. yeah, and I feel like, you know, that, that carrier, that's, that's what's missing out here mm-hmm. uh, in our society. Uh, it's, it's, it's like it's the Wild West. But it's like not wild west, wild Rome. Mm. You know, mm. it's like right. that. Right. So that's a, to try to try to bring awareness to that, trying to to uh, uh, slow that phenomenon down as much as I can and do my part. Uh, yeah, that that's what. And, and yeah, all the music I grew up in the sixties, all the music that too, because I seen there's there's been a getting away from the music of love to mm. the music of hate. We need to get back to that music of love. Oh, you know most, definitely. Right. most definitely. Um, yeah, we're going and we're gonna get back to that. Um, we're definitely gonna get back to that. Um, uh, but MCE, uh, a musical collective, um, and not just a musical collective. Um, you know, it deals with all the arts, drawing, painting, things of that nature. Um, you stated that you know the arts, uh, your art was fueled by lessons that you learned from some of our greatest teachers and scholars. Um, tell me about you know the inspiration that you draw from those scholars that came before us when it is time to create your art? I know when it comes to to music, you know, right now hip hop is the platform, like, you know, it's a it's the soapbox that Malcolm and, you know, Autumn stood on. So mm-hmm. we got a responsibility to stand on that box right now and give our people a, a, a lesson that they need as well as reflects on us that we need. So we are reflections off each other because, you know, we working on ourselves every single day, you know, but we got we got a choice in life to make. And, you know, that choice is, man, you got to make the right choice with with the voice that you have because your voice is powerful, man. Mm-hmm. You know, when we talking about the music, the voice is part of that music as well. So, man, just just knowing, following them and understanding how do they how to use their voice to you know, to navigate our people toward where we at now. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's where we gotta be with this. Yeah, that's that's deep. I, I mean, I agree, like, 
um, and and we'll definitely take a deeper dive into it. But like that, that people don't realize sometimes how powerful either the written word or the spoken word can be when it comes Man. to you know opening up the minds of our people. Um, whenever I think of you know back up like in my own journey, um, it was in a lot of ways music that I was listening to that helped open me up to yeah. whenever I did get those lessons, whenever I did, you know, run across um, that, well, I would say that path started then, but whenever I did meet people who were already on it and, you know, yeah. were able to give me books and things like that, I was already open to it because of, you know, listening to people like Brand Nubian and Public Enemy and, you know, yeah. getting all of these, all of these lessons from them as a youth. Um, oh, but yeah. Finn, like, what what do you think as far as like just the idea of you know how powerful the spoken word or in our case, you know, whether it's music or poetry, like or even singing, right? Because um, like you know, uh, like he was saying, like uh, even Marvin Gaye, you know, Stevie Wonder, they would they weren't rappers, but they were singing about things that were important to us as a community um like but what are your thoughts on you know just um it's kind of said was talking about uh, you know the ones that came before us they had the, you know they had a soapbox that they were on um where they were able to give us a word um what are your ideas as far as doing that same thing but in music form man you know um the, you know, the black arts movement uh, in the 70s with uh, a great ancestor, Amir Baraka. Yes, he said that the, the role of the artist is to raise the consciousness of other people. Mm. Um, you know, I think about artists, like you said, um, from Marvin Gaye to uh, Curtis Mayfield, OJs. Um, you know, these artists use their, uh, use their platforms to, to share uh, different stories, different narratives, and the music you felt from this exuded a level of love and care uh, for the people. Um, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire's music, man, was is is was is very inspirational. Like they, I mean, the music that they've created is is like in a class of its own. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so when I when I think about creating art, man, I'm thinking about, you know, we come from a legacy of creating uh, music in this art form that some of this music lasts, it, it stands the test of time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to create music that's it's hot today and, it, you know, ain't nobody thinking about it tomorrow. Like, you know, there's music, man, that you will play today in Folks are gonna still get up and jam to it. They know all the words. You ain't even had to be born from that era. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> right. That 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 inspires me as an artist to say, and that's one of the reasons why I say we make we make soul music in the genre of hip hop. Mm. Like soul music is is I, I say soul music is any music that black people do from the soul. Mm. It could be in any genre, though. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. try to put soul music as a genre, but soul music is anything that any music that Black people make that comes from the soul, the soul that comes from our the, the richness of our heritage and our culture. You know what I'm All saying? Right. So right. that's that's what I say. Soul music is so when we we just using the art form hip hop to express our soul music. You know what I'm saying? Blues is soul mm -hmm. music. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So reggae is, you know, well, at least roots reggae yeah, is soul yeah. music. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that, that's 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 kind of where I come from with it, man. No doubt, that's a that's a powerful sentiment. Um, e like you kind of mentioned, uh, you know, growing up and and hearing music that was, you know, like founded in love, right? Um, and now it seems to be the opposite of that. Like, well, like what are your what are your thoughts on? on where we are with that now, considering where we came from? Well, I 
I see that there is a slow shift back to love, but it, it's 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 uh it, it it still hasn't has as much traction as what 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 the alternative is right now, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, self destruction, you know, mm -hmm. which is self destruction. But you know, uh, as we have as a responsibility as artists. Uh, as MCE, we, we recognize that the arts, uh, it's like the philosopher's stone. You know, mm. it is something, it doesn't matter, like you said, it could be music, poetry, drama, it could be any other thing, but all of those things have the ability to escape the mind. You know, oh, really? uh, and, uh, us as MCE, we do recognize that, uh, 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 and, and we know it's our responsibility to. You know, if we are the potter and, and our audience is the clay, we, we you know, we want to be careful into what, what we're shaping. Yeah, so. that's a, yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think it's to the point, too, where a lot of artists, they're not even, they might not even be aware of how powerful the art can be, um, especially, like, if the only reason for doing it is monetary reasons, you know? Um, right. we, when we look at like the beginning stages of hip hop, right? You know, it was full of, you know, Pan-Africans, Black nationalists, people in the nation of Islam, mm -hmm. five percenters. There was, even though you had, you know, you still had, um, uh, the, even some of those guys were still street, right? Um, but they were able to incorporate the lessons that they learned, you know, uh, and, and and with the books as well as the streets and, and give it to us in the art, which made the kids and the youth like more inclined to, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, so he's been through the struggle, but he's talking about reading this and reading that. Um, but now like we get to a point where even though this is still, a, this still occurs, it's not on a mainstream level. Um, like, do you think it's important for, you know, artists to you know continue to strive to put these ideas and sentiments back into the art that we create well i i do know that uh you know it still goes on it goes on mostly in the church mm. that same sentiment what you're saying it still goes mm. that's where it's always been mm. and that's where it is for a lot of black people uh 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 because uh uh what the church has always offered uh, being a part of the choir and stuff like that uh that offered us a time a place to shine Mm. Where when we come from slavery, where there was nowhere else for us to shine, as right. far as uh, uh, putting it, putting our struggles, putting our passions, and, and what's going on with us through our arts, which was only thing we could do was sing. Uh, that's most of all they were left with us, with, you know. Right. And that has carried on. That has been a powerful uh, a force for us all this time, up until now. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know. So now, you know. Uh, the church, I still feel like, uh, not the church itself, but mm -hmm. the lessons we learn by showing, uh, uh, like you're saying, like saying how we've seen how it has shifted. Uh, it has shifted from uh, being a religious thing or a spiritual thing until it be a more carnal thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing in the music now today. Uh, so, yeah, the church has a place to play in that it little it has a small part but you know it has a small part but uh the mo the majority of the part is going to fall on uh artists who are uh are not bound by these restrictions of of uh, uh, of uh, esoteric religion I was just saying like that mm -hmm. esoteric religion uh, uh you know they have rules those religions have rules and you can't be a free thinker when you're bound you can't right. be a free thinker and, and so when we uh trying to get people to think outside the box, think outside the envelope, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with, our, with our music. And, 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 and uh, yeah, in the end, uh, you know, these we, we see, like you're saying, these people that do what we do, we're not getting no airplay, we're not getting no recognition uh, as far as people who uh, have the money to, if they really truly are for us, you know, then they're going to push this, but they're not, we see what they're pushing. We see what they're funding. They're funding our self-destruction, and right. and our people are, you know, they're, they're chasing the money. They're chasing the money, and and 
you know, uh, that's you know, the, the, them people I, are going to they're, they're going to they're not, they're not going to make. It. I think that's one of the important points is that it's it seems like it's purposely, you know, being done this way as far as what they choose to yeah. give light to and what they choose to give uh, money to and these huge platforms with millions of uh, subscribers who they choose to have on. Like said, like, do you feel like this was like a thing that was purposely done to, uh, to you know, make our music, not just hip hop, but R&B music to get it off track to from where it was? Yes, sir. It is. Uh, man, it's it's about capitalism. Mm. You know, saying it's about money, and the, and the truth of the matter is, you know, it's a lot of dudes out here who wanna who wanna say the stuff that we're saying, but they ain't making no money from doing it. So mm -hmm. they're gonna go where the money is, you know, where the mm -hmm. bag is, and that's that's what you get. So, but what comes with money is you losing your pride, you lose yourself. You know, what I'm saying. Your self determination, you you lose self love. Every all that goes with getting the bag. You know what I'm saying? Because if you get in the bag by yourself, your people not getting nothing from you. Right. You know, so right. that's that's kind of where we stuck at this, man. You know, in hip hop, they made a lot of division, like you said earlier, with the with the genres. You know what I'm saying? Like with the rapper and the MC. Where the MC is the master of ceremony. So now they made a division between rapper and MC to the point where if if you if you lyrical, your MC, you're a rapper, you're mainstream, you're just trying to make some money. Right. So that's what they say the war of the rap is they're winning this, you know, winning this war. But really, man, it's a it's the war of, of all as far as black people go, individuals. Because mm -hmm. in the the biggest part in all of this to me is the consumer, which is us as well. What we choose to buy, what we choose to listen to. So right. We don't have to push what you call the mainstream artists. They can put all the money behind this. We don't have to go for it. So, yeah. you know, it's just a 360 degree circle, man. And we got to, we're trying to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, figure it out. And we keep doing what I'm doing. I know my brother's going to do it too. Yeah, no doubt. That, I mean, I, mean, I, I agree 100%. Um, at the end of the day, we don't have to fall for the same trick that we've been falling for. You know, these sure. past 20, 30 years when it comes to what they've uh, been putting in front of us as far as how we consume our art. Um, yeah. I was, uh, I want to ask um, um, Obafemi this. Um, you know, I was watching some clips of the Essence Fest and uh, I, I saw Jill Scott and uh, India Ari critique, you know, the caricatures that the industry pushes as you know black men you know the gangster the drug addict the the you know just you know the you know the image that they and as far as women you know the the bad bitch or the sex crazed woman that you know only wants to date a baller and you know they addressed this um jill scott addressed it on stage and i think india i readdressed it on um uh, Instagram, but they were both, you know, pretty much saying, "Hey, man, this is not like we're like we're way more than this." You know what I'm saying? This is not. Uh, I need y'all to to start thinking um, bigger than what you're thinking, right? Um, but uh, what what are your thoughts on that, Obafemi? As far as you know, that whole situation um, with Jill Scott and India Iris critique, because I saw that. Whenever they did give that critique, it seemed to me it was like it was out of love, but they got a lot of pushback uh, from, you know, certain fans of these artists saying that, you know, um, I guess they're just old heads and not really understanding um, what the youth is on right now. You know, that's a, it's, it's a great question, man. Um, this, this, isn't new phenomenon um, because the I just say the male rappers have been doing the same thing for the longest. Um, you know, there's been a you know this type of this type of music uh, and imagery being pushed to our people. It's been going on. Uh, I think it's 
is becoming more common and more mainstream and they're they're evening it out with pushing more of our women to participate in it. Mm -hmm. At first, it was just the women uh, being pushed as just being in the videos and, right. and, all, and just kind of playing the background. But now the sisters are making the same type of music that the males have made for for years, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and we've, you know, these these artists, you know, you can go back and listen to some old Millie Jackson, like yeah, she right, was right. talking about stuff like this. You know right. what I'm saying? But right. <laughs> I think for for the time that we in right now, and under and understanding uh, the issues that Black people face uh, here in this country and globally, uh, our image is being marketed and promoted all over the world and when this type of uh, when these type of like you said caricatures or stereotypes are promoted beyond our borders it helps to paint a very narrow picture of who and what we are truly about they not they don't they ain't, they're not pushing this type of image to our brothers and sisters on the continent so they only familiar with the little yachties and the little babies and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The uh the um you know the sweet tea and you know all, all you know, they that's what they get familiar with because that's what's being pushed to the forefront. They ain't getting to learn about the Cyrox and, and, mm -hmm. and Star, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they not they're not getting the chance to experience this part of our culture here in, in the United States. So I think it's helping paint a very negative uh, view to us. I think with Jill Scott and uh, NDRE, of course, I, you know, I pretty much figured they were going to get some pushback and people were going to say, oh, it's just because they old. <laughs> no, it ain't because they old, because when they was in their 20s, we had this music. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this music was here then. Right. It was just mainly pushed by the males. You understand right. what I'm saying? So uh, I think as women, for women to come out and say they tired, it, I was glad to hear it. Mm. Because if, a, if you know, a lot of times, mm. like if a man said, mm. oh, we just hating on the women. Right. You know right. Right. I, I was glad to hear it. <laughs> uh, uh, stand up and say something. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm. it's, oh, it's just patriarchy trying to control a woman's mm. body. No. Mm. Mm -hmm. It ain't what it is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But on the, it, it's it's a whole lot of confusion, you know. Like uh, how a woman chooses to dress, it shouldn't warrant her being sexually assaulted and Fact. no stuff like this. Facts. At the same time, we live in a country that don't have no morals, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There ain't no boundaries. We, you know, TV never go off, media never stops. All you can eat buffet is is full of excess. You know what I'm saying? So when, when if you feed a child this day after day after day, they're gonna have an unquenchable thirst for this type of stuff. And and that's what we grow up in. That's that's what's nurturing our, our people's minds. To you can't get enough of it. I gotta have more. I gotta see less. They gotta shake some more ass. They gotta, you know what I'm saying? They got, they gotta show most. Like, you can't get enough of it, right? I'm gonna ask you gonna shake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this in there too, man. It's not, it's not on there. But back in the day, if you had any kind of deal that wasn't a rap deal, you was set up. You know, like MC Hammer had Taco Bell. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, remember he got he the hammer dog. Yeah, he was a sellout for that. Remember. You was a sellout for that, man. Now everybody got a damn McDonald's meal, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody trying to sell out. Like, that's the goal is to sell out. <laughs> right. Sell out or sell in, right? Right. right. Um, it's like, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's interesting, man. Um, uh, Great answer, uh, by the way. Uh, but um, when it comes to y'all music, though, um, the song Red, Black, and Green, uh, uh, great video, great song, got a lot of views on YouTube. Um, starts off with a clip from Marcus Garvey, a beat hit. Y'all start going in, dope hook, man. If you can, just tell me about like um, uh, the idea behind you know creating that song and the video. 
Which one? Red, black, or green? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, it was it was three songs on there. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> one one was called Red. That's the beginning. The middle was black, and then green. Oh, my bad, bro. Really? I, I actually I assumed that it was the. Okay, so I'm talking about Red. Yeah. I'm talking, talking about, about Red. Red. Okay. Yeah, because well, what got, what got me from that was the, um, just the imagery in the beginning, right? Um, yeah. And then you know what happens whenever y'all you know I, I mean y'all yeah. obviously the imagery coupled with what Garvey is saying and then what y'all yeah. saying you know like if you can like uh yeah just kind of kind of go into that for me. Well, for the for the video, you know, saying for the purpose of that was to show, like you said, the imagery we shedding blood every day in these streets, man. You know, like in Pine Bluff, we just had what. Two or three teenagers died off in the last two or three weeks. You know what I'm saying? You know, and they they died from natural causes. You know what I'm saying? So we that image was to show that. So when you got to the ending of it, they resurrected and dancing. It's, it's kind of like when they shedding blood, that's on all of us. You know what I'm saying? So that was my yeah. take on as far as red goes. So when my ancestors shed blood, that was for all of us. So So but but, just, but but what about and, and okay, so so the and which is a obviously a dope concept, um, a song for each color in the uh, you know Pan African flag, right? Like, what was the idea behind that? Um, so let me add this, man. We um, you know, said 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 was the lead on red. Uh, e did black, and uh, I took the lead on green. And uh, rather than just make a song called Red, Black, and Green, mm -hmm. we really wanted to develop tracks that just embodied what each of those colors stood for uh, in, in in as many ways as we could. You know what I'm saying? So the, yeah. from mm -hmm. the the from our wardrobe to you know what I'm saying, like how we shot the whole nine. Um, we were we were just trying to capture the essence of what these colors represent uh, for us individually and as a collective, as you know, as MCE and for our people. So, yeah, uh, um, yeah uh, red, yeah, red is a very, uh, you know, all our all our sons are in the video. You know what I'm saying? So if you notice the children in that dance, them all our sons. No, a family of that. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, we, um, you know, we, 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 like, we doing this, we, you know, we do this for them. Like, mm -hmm. they are, they are teenagers. They, you know, they, they are growing up in this. They, you know what I'm saying? So the, the music that's, that's being put out today is targeting their minds. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. we, I'm like, we definitely have to have a, a be responsible with the type of music and imagery that we putting out uh, when it comes to that, man. So, but, uh, but I, I do I'll let you speak on uh, black though. Okay. <laughs> who was, yeah? Who wants to speak on the black? Yeah. Uh, while red was. Uh, Focus on on uh, uh, the blood that's been shed by our peoples for our black nation. Uh, black was focused on the love uh, of our black people for self and others, each other. Uh, so my take on it was, you know, uh, to put out a track that emphasizes uh, black love, uh, 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 black love equaling black power, uh, which. Uh, uh, catchphrase that Cedric brother by brother Cedric he came up with that and uh, it, it just worked it worked perfectly for the song and uh, yeah so uh, so yeah uh, you know uh, with the creation of the, the Pan African flag for mm -hmm. for the Black Nation uh, and what it represents and what it symbolizes for us uh, like brother Over Femi said and I know I've heard my own self I've heard many a song. They just say red, black, and green, but I've yet to hear where any uh, artist had focused on each individual color. And 
with each one of those, because each one of them stand for something by themselves, you know, right. uh, and then unified together, uh, they bring it, uh, you know, they bring it all full circle for, for us. So, well, yeah, that was my, for me, uh, was, uh, bringing together our Black love again. What made y'all put it consolidated into, like, one, like, 16, 17 minute video, which I think was dope, right? <laughs> What what made y'all like? What was the idea behind that? Instead of just kind of putting it out, you know, the red, the black, the green. Because when I saw it, I was like, okay, it's sixteen minutes. I understand that you know it's a it's three different songs, but as a sixteen minutes, like, okay, is this considered one joint? Because it's you know, one so we we re we released the project as an EP. Okay, so uh, you know we we wanted to. The, the video is kind of like we, we tell the story of the red, black, and green. So, you know, Garvey, yeah. Gar Garvey kind of narrating it throughout uh, the story as we explaining the best we can what what the colors mean, you know what I'm saying, uh, visually and through our words. So um, we just want to try to capture the essence of each color on its own, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like... The the each each bar in that flag means something. So right. we wanted to yeah, not just try to wrap this up in in one song. Each color needs its own track. Uh and so that's that's that was uh the goal to 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 bring that to life, man. Um well what about uh I told you, you know we was talking off camera. I told you one of my favorites was Apex. It kind of um took me yeah. back to that, you know, that that feeling of and the the art form in its most like you know purest essence, where it's beats and rhymes, and the beat is dope. And obviously, y'all going off. Um, I think that might be my favorite joint from y'all. But um, if you can just explain the thinking of of you know making that. <laughs> Man, it's it's one of those tracks where it was just. What they say like a freestyle would have would have been, you know, yeah. saying it's just just really just going in, you know, kinda like like back in the day, you know, saying you the beat come on, you start going in. Right. So the video, I kinda wanted it just like that, black and white, you know, saying he's just going in, you know. And you can't nothing 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 is getting in the way of the lyrics. Right. And that was the whole purpose of Apex, man. Like you had to hear what what we were saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I shot the video. I made sure I put the words on the damn screen. You know what I'm saying? You can hear exactly <laughs> right. what we said. Well, well that's so. what I wanted to ask. You said, um, like, being from the South, I'm from the South as well. We've all heard it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know, MCs in the South don't get the love for being <laughs> lyricists like, you know, they should. <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, on songs, especially songs like Apex, where y'all are in that bag and y'all showing skill is it ever something where where it's like yo man they kind of doubting us down here I, i'm gonna have to i gotta get in my bag every now and then and and show them what i can do with this game, <laughs> you know what i mean it's kinda, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's kind of one of the things yeah 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 <laughs> hey you know man um yeah it, yeah that, you know we i know me personally man i've gotten it <laughs> Uh, you know, on, on several occasions, man, from performing at different places, man, you know, out of right. town, out of state. And, uh, you know, to tell this one story real quick, man, um, I was, uh, <laughs> I performed, uh, not last year, I think, but uh, 2021 down in uh, Dallas for mm -hmm. the New Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had a, uh, uh, you know, I did, I did, I think two songs, man. You know what I'm saying? The crowd was in there, man. You know, I, I got the, the the part of the video on YouTube, so you can kind of yeah. hear the crowd response. But anyway, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I done walked off stage, man. Uh, a couple brothers done shook me, shook my hand, yada yada yada. Man, it was dope, yada yada yada. So I'm out in the lobby, and um, brother came up to me. Uh, yo, bro, man, bro, you dope, you dope, man. I got to give you your props, you know what I'm saying? He said, I ain't going to lie. Man, when you came up there, bro, I was kind of, they said you was from Arkansas. 
I just kind of shook my head like, man. <laughs> 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 You know, we had to come about the, you know, we got to come out the corner. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Apex was one of the songs we had to, we had to throw some jabs and hooks. Nah, it's definitely one of those songs, man. Y'all definitely, um, because here's the thing, like, you know, like on, um, like the red, the black, and the green, um, it's obviously, you know, three dope tracks, but you are, you are taking the audience somewhere you're teaching them like you know what i mean like like you're painting a picture apex seemed to me like it was more uh, like i'm i'm pulling my sword out you know what i'm saying and and we finna chop heads man but the ability to do both you know to me there's a sign of a great artist man and like you know just for all the people watching if you're not in tune um definitely you know the links will be oh, in the description man y'all definitely um Check them out, man, because they they great artists and they and they pushing the culture forward. Um, and you know, I, I definitely appreciate artists like this because this is what we need, man. This is um, you know, like Obafemi was saying earlier, like they kind of make a um, they kind of they it's like a a narrow they the what they put, portray for the world makes the world see us in a narrow view. When we're so much more than that, man, and uh, you know what I'm saying. I definitely appreciate what y'all do. Um, as far as uh, I know, um, uh, you were also speaking about um, art, right? And not just being MCs and 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 rapping and singing. You mentioned like painting and drawing, and how the collective, you know, has, you know, that aspect involved in it too if you can you know just talk about that song because i think that's powerful as well yeah no doubt man um when we kind of hooked up together uh you know as far as like the music go man um you know i used to i used to do a lot of production so i was you know on, on the beats real tough mm -hmm. and um you know we you know uh, said he would come to the crib, you know, we listen to beats and stuff like that, man. But, um, you know, I, I don't know how it happened, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I had some stuff I used to, I had some of my old artwork and stuff in the house. And I know Sid was uh, working on some pieces and, you know, he's like, yo, I'm doing this. And he, he come out and he got so much art, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, yo, we all, like we all do this on on different levels at different times, man. And um, so being able to incorporate that side of who we are, like we should, you know, said and E uh, do the visuals, like so our videos. Mm. Uh, you know, they they work in the cameras, man. Uh, I I do most of the graphics uh, for the group. So. Um, you know, but we've done some we've done some mural work. Uh, I think Say got some artwork he's about to uh, about to release into one of the uh, the um, the Arts and Science Center uh, here. Uh, you know, I just released a children's book back in February, man. So, like, just just being able to to tap into other areas of our creativity, man, to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. But also just bringing it into the culture, man. Of you know, this is who and what we are. This is what we got to bring forth. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's very important, man. No doubt. And e, uh, so you are responsible for some of the visuals, huh? Oh yeah, uh, uh, me and my brother Sid Adams, uh, Sid Adams Production, and my me, uh, Son of the Right Hand Productions. We come together and uh, we uh, uh, got several works in progress. We got a. a, a uh, a anime that's mm. in, in production. Uh, we got a uh, little sh uh, something like the Twilight Zone. We got a little series like that uh, that we're oh. that's in production, mm -hmm. pre-production right now. Um, yeah, we got some things in the works, man. Uh, 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 and you know, it all my love for art 
started, uh, man, when I first saw the stars, when I mm -hmm. first saw the stars and, mm -hmm. and, and Star Trek and all that old Star Wars and all, <laughs> all that old type of stuff, it gave me my right. one, gave me that wonder. Right. Gave me that wonder. You know, it gave me that wonder, but then uh, I had a um, autistic uncle. Mm -hmm. Back in the 60s, you know, they were just called, he was just crazy, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but he taught me how to draw. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to draw uh, 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 something that, uh, uh, you know, that stuck with me for the rest of my life. No. That's dope. What, um, yeah. And, and so what I did want to ask also, uh, you own and operate a black owned uh, community garden. Um, like what's the name of the garden and can you tell us what the uh, objective of the garden is and why it was something important for you to, for, for you to do? No doubt, man. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Man, I've, I've been growing personally since 2011. Mm. Uh, I joined an African Center study group here in Palm Bluff mm -hmm. back in like 2007, 2008. And one of the tenants uh, to be a part of the group is you got to start growing some of your own food. Mm. Uh, so 2011, man, I broke ground in my backyard. I had like maybe three little six foot rolls, went to the store, bought some pepper plants, some tomatoes, some collard greens, I think some jalapeno peppers, man, put it in the ground, you know, I, I turned my soil over, put it in the ground, and yo, you know, stuff started producing, man. Um, my father, you know, has been gardening for, for, you know, for a long time, man, so I would go out to my dad's house and uh, help him in his garden, you know, my grandparents grew it, 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 like it's in my blood, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, um, but you know, actively doing it my own, I started in 2011. By the time 2016, 17 rolled around, man, I was going, I, I you know, my rolls were running from fence to fence in the backyard. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I planted as much space as I wanted to plant in the backyard. I started sharing stuff on social media. Mm -hmm. People asking mm -hmm. questions like, how you do this? How you do that? And, um, you know, it's like you, you can't invite everybody to your backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my good brother, E, you know, E, he said, hey, man, you know, I got a lot. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? We can start the community garden on this lot, man. So we were doing community cleanups in the neighborhoods uh, around town, man. This one of the lots we cleaned up and uh, we broke ground in the fall of 2017, man. So mm -hmm. uh, we've been active uh, on the community guard side since 2017. We incorporated as a business uh, two years ago. We started a mobile farmer's market uh, where we set up different places around town. Uh, we also buy from other local farmers. Um, the importance, man, is just doing for self, man. It's kind of taking some of your own power back not relying so much on the system to do everything for us. Like, you know, it kind of ties us into the, the, the project. We, uh, the, we about to drop a new EP called food clothes in the shelter, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, the, the food is, 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 is serious, man. Like, you know, African people are an agrarian people by nature, like our spirituality, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the way we build our, like everything that you need comes from the earth. So, just developing that relationship with nature, man. The, one of the easiest ways to get back to nature is to grow something. You know? right. So we started to grow some challenge in 2017. It's a hashtag, uh, grow some, S-U-M, thin, T-H-I-N, challenge. Uh, so you can, you know, you Google that uh, grow some challenge, man. You see people all over the country that and got involved with the challenge, man. So, uh, yeah, it's just that initiative, man, to show people like, yo, if, I, if we can do it, you can do it too. Uh, it don't matter what type of living condition you got. If grass can grow through concrete, you can plant something that you can grow to use for your for your mind, mm. your body, your spirit, man. So, man, that's yeah, that's that's powerful, man. I um, I salute you, brothers, man. I, I wanted to say, man, I definitely um appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, you got your, you know, uh, your hands in a in a wide array of things, man, and and that's 
that's really dope, man. I, I definitely, uh, uh, you know, glad that we were able to have this sit down for everybody that, you know, wants to know how they can uh, connect um, with the MCE, where they can find the music, um, you know, uh, where they can follow you on social media. Let everybody know. No doubt. So um, you can follow MCE on uh, all our music is on all streaming platforms. Uh, you can just look up MCE. Mind you, I got to say this every time, man. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's another MCE out here in the world, man. They from the <laughs> UK somewhere, man. <laughs> we make two totally different types of music. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if it ain't on this right here, it probably right. it ain't yeah. on <laughs> Right. All right, but and now uh, I have the as link far as the, like, mm -hmm. I have the link in the description as well. Yeah, yeah. As far as like finding us on social media, uh, look up uh, MCE Soul Music. M C E S O L M U Z I K. That's on Facebook. That's on Instagram. That's our YouTube channel. Uh, as well as we got a, you know, we got a Twitter as well, but uh. As far as me personally, Nine Over Femi, that's on uh, all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, my YouTube channel, and, uh, you know, the brothers got they, they got their uh, platforms as well. No doubt. What about mm -hmm. you? Uh, hey. What about you, Sid? You back? Hey, yeah, I'm sorry about that, brother. Oh, no, oh, uh, look, I, look, we black. Off. I know how it go. <laughs> we black. But, uh, I know how it go, man. I was just saying, like, <laughs> For anybody that want to, um, you know, find you and 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 follow you, man, and would and you know just peep all the great works, uh, that you're doing, mm -hmm. man. How can they? How can they follow? Man, I'm on Instagram and YouTube, uh, at C D A D A M Z, and um, a majority of the videos that you know we do, you're gonna catch some. You're gonna catch most of those on my page as well. Uh, like I said, Instagram, man. Uh, just, just check us out, man. We got we got more in store coming on the way. Uh, I'm sure he told you food, food, clothes, and shelter yeah. coming. You know, if you can, so, if you but, can, tell us a little about that before we go. Tell us a little about that food, clothes, and shelter EP that's coming. About the food, clothes, and shelter. It's, it's mm -hmm. we doing similar EPs, man. Like the red, black, and green, mm -hmm. and food, clothes, and shelter. Because you know, without food, clothes, and shelter, what matters? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so it. So it's going to be, we're going to try to put it similar to how we did that, man. Like paint a picture with it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. just be prepared dope. for that. Yeah. Dope. Definitely looking forward to that. And what about you, E? Uh, you can find me on all those uh, platforms too uh, at uh, Son of the Right Hand. That's S-U-N of the Right Hand. You can find me on uh, Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on uh, YouTube. Uh, you know. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. I, and and uh, I have everybody links, man. But before we go, I just want to say again, man, I salute, I salute y'all brothers, man, from the garden, from the music, from the art, just from, from the idea and work as far as wanting to, you know, shine that light on our struggle and what we need to do to get up out of it to the youth. Yeah, yeah. I, I salute y'all and I appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate you too, bro. No doubt, no doubt, man. Peace, peace. Peace.